Check it out, only four horsepower. It gets great mileage. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Lexington, Kentucky for the Keeneland Concorde de Elegance. This is a great show and a beautiful setting. Kind of a gray day and a little bit of that liquid sunshine coming down, but there are some stellar cars here and I'm determined to see them all before any more of this stuff comes down. Let's get to work. That's nice. Tom, hey, great to see you, man. Nice to see you. Thanks hey, for being you know, here. Really appreciate it. You Big look fan. so dapper. You're about the most uh, dapper car show guy I've ever seen. Well, my wife has a large amount to do with that, so we <laughs> all thanks go to her on that deal. Yeah, fun stuff. Tom, this is just a beautiful show. I mean, it's, it's, so it's a little bit, you know, we got this mist going on. Yeah. But I'm surprised the number of people that came out for it. And the cars are unbelievable. Well, this was a reunion year, so we had the best of the best. So it was the, the toughest job of this weekend was for the judges. I don't envy that position at all this year. <laughs> Not right. one bit. You're right, it was a best of the best year, and that explains it, because I'm telling you, oh, this show you. field is magnificent. Super. It's a jewel. We're so blessed to be able to be here. It's great grounds, a very historical place. and It's for the benefit of? It's the Kentucky Children's Hospital, and that has been our beneficiary for 11 years now. The true story is that these guys and gals are absolute heroes, and we just have one very small, humble, portion of helping to support their cause and we get to enjoy our passion with cars here we get to get out and, and there's that camaraderie between Absolutely. car people right well it's an extended family it and, is. and the other thing about car people is just how giving they are because yes. again there's almost some charitable underpinning to every show sure and and you've certainly got a, a worthy one and you guys have raised oh, a lot of money it's a lot of fun it's a lot cause. of fun and what an array uh, i mean you know the true classics and you got muscle and you got these aero cars here this time that's we have the early 1900 cars right the nickel plated cars right, and it's right. like how cool to be able on one field to be able to see that all the way up to an Enzo or a McLaren I, or that type of thing. And we consciously tried to put together American classics and trucks and Crosleys and race cars and all that kind of stuff. Broad, so it's very broad, it's fun. very eclectic. And this is really also, well, the show is just today, Saturday. Yes. You start on Thursday, you have the, the distillery tour. I we mean, we're in, that part, tour, we're in that neck of the woods. You absolutely, know? <laughs> we are. Last night was the hangar bash. Hangar bash, yes. It's at the museum, the museum. Yeah, out there. Neat stuff, it's neat cool stuff. stuff. It's a wonderful event, and the Thank vibe you. is fantastic. We might be letting up a little bit. Let's look I at a few so. of these cars. Yeah. Let's check them out. Let's cool. go. John, our paths cross again. I've bumped into you at several shows over the years. I think the Alt Park in uh, Cincinnati, and then uh, there was a, a Shelby show. They had the 98 Cobra. Down in Nashville. Down in Nashville, that's right. So I'm coming in here. This is the first thing I see, the Ab Jenkins Duesenberg. This car is amazing. I had the opportunity to, uh, with Ab Jenkins' son, Marv, I actually did the Mormon Meteor 3. This was the predecessor to that, and this was actually the first Mormon Meteor. What's the story on its name? This was the first generation of the Duesenberg Special. And once it set its speed records on the Bonneville Salt Flats, they had a uh, contest to name the car, and they picked the Mormon Meteor as a, <laughs> as a winning name, so. And this nose was something that Ab created in the Mormon Meteor 3, that kind of scoop and swept look. Would this have been the original color? We actually spent a lot of time recreating to exactly the way it was raced. Uh, Even initially. this Duesenberg script? They actually took a movie crew with them and they filmed and they wanted to be able to see it was a Duesenberg. They were going to make sure everybody knew this was a Duesenberg. Oh yeah. And this windshield would have been something custom made for this car? It was raked back a little bit, but uh -huh. it's very similar to the standard window on a Duesenberg. No kidding. Oh. All the dashboards, all standard Duesenberg. And the offset seat? Apple was a little bit smaller he, he guy was, and I think uh, it was just had to be uh -huh. bumped up. And... Yeah, because it wasn't... A, it's not an adjustable seat. <laughs> no. But also, like, with the offset seat, you have the offset yeah, fairings, sure. you know, and it just, it's wild. Look at even the orange, the kind of pumpkin interior with the yellow would have been kind of the original colors, as yes. best you could tell. Yes. So this started with the Duesenberg engine. It went through some transformations, but it's a Deuce, it's Duesenberg now. Yes, it, it got refitted with the original serial number Duesenberg engine from when it originally raced. Let's look at that, baby. All right. Supercharged, of course. They modified the supercharger just a little bit to give it a little more uh, boost. Put some Bendix Stromberg uh, racing carbs on it. These are updraft, is that? Yeah. They're updraft and down through the supercharger. And then this plate is just shielding the, the heat 
Yeah, from the exhaust. And they're such stunning engines. I mean, dual overhead cam, eight cylinder, four valves per cylinder, way ahead of its time. I tell you, I mean, I'm glad Harry allowed it to come out and you're you're here with it. You've you got a pretty good gig. I got a great gig. <laughs> I thought I had a great gig, you got a good gig. Beautiful Duesenberg, thanks for bringing it out. Thanks, Dennis. We should do this. He wants to do this. Bob, this is a boat. <laughs> is, I mean, this is a monster. This is a 57 Eldorado Brome, right? Cadillac Eldorado Brome. Cadillac Brome. Eldorado Brome. This is a heavy car. 5,300 pounds. 5,300 pounds. And these bumpers alone, I mean, they're... they're cast aluminum, triple chrome plated. So if you hit those, they didn't bend, they broke. This is almost comical how far these stick out. Yes. They're Dagmars, right? That right, that's the popular name. The popular for name. <laughs> we, we don't know what that refers <laughs> to, but what caught my eye about this car is I've never seen one in this bright red. Well, this is Dakota red. It would have been an optional paint for the year. It well, looks really good in red. Well, I think so. That's why I chose the. the <laughs> and, and, and your and your outfit today too, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I actually done one of these once in the past. It was Bill Warner's, and that was the first time I had learned of this. What I would say is rather unique and period option. These shot glasses. Right, they're magnetic shot glasses. It's ironic that in, in 57 they encourage drinking and driving and smoking <laughs> cigarettes. Well, yeah, because you've got this little inlay for your camel, non filtered cigarettes, uh, of course. Ladies had their perfume that came with the car. What I understand is it's, it's really these things that are the tough thing to find. You can restore this car, but finding this stuff is like extremely hard to find and very expensive. So in 57, we're getting a little bit of, you know, fin kick up here. Yeah, similar to a 57 Chevy. That uh -huh. just, that's in not... fact, that, that part of it is almost 57 right. Chevy, exactly. And then again, these big Dagmars back here. And is, uh, would this also be cast yes, aluminum? Yes, that's correct. Oh, that's crazy. Well, it sort of had a, I think a 365 V8. Let's go have a look at that engine. All right. Oh yeah. I love that air cleaner. They call that the bat wing or that's something, That's correct, right? yeah? yes, that's the bat wing. And under that baby are two quads. Correct, two four barrels. Wow, oh, man. The car was originally air ride, and a lot of them were converted in dealerships just to springs. Straight springs? And this one has been converted, but I left the compressor on to show how it normally would look. Well, it's packed in there, too. I mean, yes. for a car this size, I'm surprised there's so little room in the engine compartment. Yeah, but you understand why it weighs 5,300 pounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of... So, Bob, a 57 Caddy Eldorado Brome in Dakota Red. Yes, sir. I'm in heaven. <laughs> it's a well, beautiful thank car. You. Thanks for bringing it out, man. Appreciate it. And you look marvelous. Well, thank you. <laughs> Well, Stefan, this is a rare car, uh, a Nash Healy, and I've, I've only seen a few of these, and I've done, years ago, I did a, a Roadster, but, but I think the coupes are even more rare. Is that true? They are. There were only 60 of these made. How many? 60. Wow, that's and actually this... more than I thought. When you think of Nash, you don't <laughs> think of something that looks like right. this. You think of a, you yeah. know, pr kind of pedestrian, kind of an everyman car. Right, the farmer's but, car. Yeah, yeah, but they were really looking to do something sexy, something sporty, such a unique body style. The one thing that never quite fit to me in these cars was in fact the grill. The rest of the car is so sleek and this grill is kind of big. It was the first grill work that had the headlights inboard. Uh-huh. So, and these are, what, parking lights or signals or? Yes. What a beautiful interior, too. Although, I will say, it's a little bit Nash in its gauging and everything. The gauges are Nash, right? And it's got an adjustable telescopic steering wheel. And it's not really a back seat, it's just a compartment or? There's just uh, space back there. I mean, this nice because suitcases fit back there, but mm. not much else. And then this little almost caddy-esque kick up here. Oh, yeah. And the trunk, that's aluminum. The lid is aluminum. The cross Isn't legs, that it, that's Pina Farina, and that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, interesting. Kind of looks like a Corvette. It does. We know where they got the idea. I, I wonder, <laughs> I just, I can't imagine. So, wow, so that's basically your Nash straight six, right? Yep. But Nash's wouldn't have had side draft SUs. No, they put those on in the beginning with the aluminum bodies, ran these for just a couple more cars after this one, and they switched over to Carter's. Wised up, and so, because I imagine this is a little bit temperamental. It's a little bit temperamental. With this high-performance aluminum head, I guess it really did well, because they raced these things in the 52 Le Mans and took first in their class and were only beat out by two uh, Mercedes Gullwings. Wow, so how does, it, how does it perform? Is it a fun car to drive? Um, it's not like driving a Porsche. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Close it back down. But it's, well, of course, it's a 53, so I mean, it's going to have sort of, you know, period performance. Yes, yeah. It, you know, it shifts like that, it stops like that. 
but, but nothing fun. looks like it. Nothing at all so looks like this. It's a Nash Healy, what was the model called? Le Mans. Uh, so it's a 53 Nash, Nash Healy Le Mans. Le Mans Coupe. Wow, yeah. Stefan, beautiful car. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank My you so much. Well, Bob, this is the only three-wheeled Morgan here. What a it shock. Is. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's probably the case pretty often, right? Yeah, it really is, considering the fact that in the 30s, there were almost 400,000 of them around the I world. I am shocked at that. I mean, they really did build a lot of these cars. And there were 45 manufacturers. Now, when I think of these, I think of an engine out front. The first ones did have an engine out front, some motorcycle motor Right, out front. right. In 1935, they took a Ford engine, put it under the hood, made it a far more civilized car. So and, once they put the of, engine in, then they, then they, they had, had to, to put a radio that. shell on it. Nice, nice. What's the suspension set up? It's a sliding pillar front suspension. It's basically a rectangle and the axles themselves and the hub and everything moves up and down oh, on really? a pillar. Oh, wow. So it's a rigid thing, but that's what made it such a competitive car for hill climbs and bogs and slogs and stuff because it didn't have the suspension pushing the car around. How about the steering wheel? Was that a Morgan? No, it was an aftermarket, aftermarket thing. A Morgan something? wheel was a piece of junk, if you uh -huh. want to know the truth. And then somebody, somebody made this modification Wow. The, so fat guys like me can get in. That's nice. Yeah, I like that. Is that the transmission? Transmission. Right. And is it a sequential? or is No, it... it's not sequential. It's a standard H pattern. Uh-huh. So let's look under here, because they have a really curious setup back here. It goes through the transmission, goes to a right angle gearbox. This is the right yeah. angle gearbox, and then to a sprocket and a chain. And then they're chain driven. Yeah, oh yeah. Dual shock setup, the original? They were put on for racing just uh -huh. to keep the back end down. And wood frame? Wood, well, it's a metal frame. You know, that's the myth about Morgans right. is that they have a yeah. wooden frame. They don't have they a wooden, wooden frame. frame. They have a metal frame. Engine's 1172cc. Tiny little SUs, I'm they're assuming. They're SUs, yes. Is it a two oh, inch, or a four? Inch or four. Would be the same as a early Sprite or the same as a uh, Spitfire. But that's the whole, I mean, that's, that's the it. whole thing. That's it. That's the whole banana. <laughs> So is this thing like an absolute kick to drive? Well, it's very tractable on the street, and under normal circumstances, you wouldn't know that you weren't driving a four-wheel car. No kidding. They're just such wild-looking little machines. Beautiful setting. It's a, just a beautiful show. And, you, and again, it's the only three-wheeled Morgan here. It's the only one here today. It's killer. Well, Margaret, it's so good to see you again. I, you know, I, I first bumped into you, I think it was at uh, Keels and Wheels about three years ago That's down right. in, in, in Texas. I saw you this morning and tried to catch up with you to say hi. Well, you got, you're pretty fast. I'm surprised you didn't well, catch me. I'll tell you, I've been chasing men all my life and I can't catch them. You're my kind of girl. I just can't catch them. And I learned then that um, you were only a 101 years young Oh, I at was the time. Just, just a, a kid just, then. Just a kid, yeah. And you had a birthday recently, you're now I certainly did. You're 104. 104. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and not only you look fabulous, but your car looks fabulous. This is your Packard, which you've had since the late 50s. This is my baby. You drive this thing. You've always driven this thing, Oh, right? yes. Yeah, I've driven Packard for, for years. But you haven't let this one go. What is no. it about this car? It reminded me of the first car that I had of a big car. and. Uh, I just had to have it. <laughs> Do you get along well with it? I mean, you still... Oh, I love it. It's got a four-speed transmission yeah. on it, and I love the gears in it. They give you a different tune every time you change gears. You know, I don't double clutch. I don't have to. And this car also holds kind of a special place. It was the first car to get 100 points in the Classic Car Club. And it's a 1930. You've obviously restored it. But has the engine ever been apart? When it was redone, the that, first part. Yes. But since then, no. No, no. We've just kept it with very good oil in it, and I pamper it a little bit. It's one thing that you've had it this long. It's another that you drive it and drive it so well. That's what they were made for. And if you don't take these cars out and exercise them, you don't get the oil off no, of them. No, there's nothing worse than letting them set. Oh, you, and keep the oil changed. You, it sets there and deteriorates uh -huh. very, very fast. I first met you in Texas. We're now in, in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. How many of these do you do? Oh, about eight a year. <laughs> I mean, you and you're a celebrity wherever you go. I mean, people, people no, know you. No, the car you. is a star. Well, the car is the car is always the star. I mean, and, and, and you're you're so humble and so gracious, but I'm telling you, you're a star too. <laughs> <laughs>
man, the Keeneland Concours is just spectacular. And there are some mighty fine people down here in Lexington, Kentucky. This is one you ought to check out. And it even cleared off. Come down here. Attention, my classic car fans. Go online now to check out our latest selection of DVDs. Get all 26 episodes from the 2015 season in one DVD set. Order yours today at myclassiccar.com.